Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. I'm Gabrielle, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Tracy, and I've been a pastry chef for over nine years. I bake probably like once a month, very rarely something as fancy as cinnamon rolls. I used to make them all the time with my grandmother, with my Nana. Whenever we would have leftover dough from making nut roll, we would take the leftover dough and make cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon buns are usually made with a fresh yeasted dough, such as a brioche, but I wanted to step it up a notch, so I've decided to go with a croissant dough for my cinnamon buns. So to make our croissant dough, we're gonna start with the actual de trump, our dough portion of the croissant. I love cinnamon rolls. I wish I could make them in like a homemade from scratch way, but the only way I know how is with pre-made pizza dough. <laughs> it contains flour and probably some other stuff. I'm not really sure. So we are gonna put two kinds of flour, all purpose and bread flour, which is a high gluten flour. So I just put in my butter and sugar, sugar, which is really the crux of this dough recipe because it's a buttery and sugary dough. You need a little bit of salt. While this is still mixing, we want to go ahead and prepare our yeast. I'm going to put in my milk, which is room temperature. Water, also lukewarm. That will go into our cold, wet ingredients. And we're gonna dissolve our yeast is awesome. It has that delicious thing that's gonna make it into a beautiful dough. And then I'm gonna crack an egg. We are gonna combine our wets with our dries. I like to mix up my wet ingredients first, and then I like to add in just a little bit of flour. So I just keep going through batches of putting in dry ingredients into my wet ingredients. We're gonna combine this until it just comes together. And now I'm gonna transfer it onto my bench. And now I'm gonna just roll it out real fast into sort of like a, a rectangle. Oh, it's so weird. It looks like the villain in an anime I've been watching. And it does get messy. If you have a phobia of getting your hands a little dirty, then I don't know. Maybe you don't want to use this method. Uh, okay, great. So what I'm gonna do now is just knead it until it becomes slightly smooth. I'm gonna transfer this to my plastic wrap. The next thing we get, we're gonna do with it is transfer it into this other bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and grease it. All right, we're gonna give it another hour and a half to two hours to let the yeast dry and do its thing. You're then gonna take this and put it in the fridge for about 60 to 90 minutes. It needs to cool down. Right now it's too sticky to roll. So we're gonna give it a little nap. I'm just gonna roll this out. That'll just take me like an hour or two. Ta-da! Beautiful, giant glob of dough. This was rising for about two hours. So I've just taken my dough out of the fridge that's rested for about an hour and a half, and I have my butter prepared and ready to go. We're gonna encase our butter in our dough, so that way we can begin our lamination process. At this point, you wanna make sure you have a good amount of flour, flour to your workspace, and because you grease it, it should flop right out. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, that food scientist is gonna have something to say about all this. And now we're going to pat it out and do an oblong shape because we kind of want to get it as close to a rectangle as possible. I'm going to roll this dough into about a 12 inch square. For some reason it stays round when I roll it. It's not gonna be a perfect rectangle. I don't usually use parchment paper, but I feel like it's, I feel like it's working against me here. <laughs> I probably should have put flour on the parchment paper. There's, there's a couple factors that if it's sticking to you, you might want to retrace your steps and go back a little bit. Uh, second attempt. Hear me out, I'm gonna flour it. Whenever you're working with any kind of dough that has yeast in it, such as pizza, brioche, any really kind of bread dough, you wanna work really quickly. Rolling out your dough really shouldn't take more than maybe five minutes. 10 to 12 minutes. What's really important here is to not overwork our dough. I don't know what happens if you overwork pizza dough, but my gut sense is that it's not good. If you're working with a pizza dough and you overwork it, it's gonna become essentially like a rock. <laughs> So I'm pretty happy with this. We have about a 12 inch square. Have my edges aren't too thick, not too thin. Just right, as Goldilocks would say. Now we're gonna take our barrage, or our butter portion, and actually encase it inside of our dough. And now we're gonna begin to fold our flaps up and cover our butter. You should have a nice square. What we are gonna do is roll it out, and now we're gonna proceed to fold it into a book turn. This is our first turn. We are gonna do two of these to give us enough layers. Now this goes in the fridge for at least an hour. It's honestly fine if you have little holes and things because it's just like places for filling to go through, you know? Yum, yum. 
So this is a dough that we've done one more set of book turns on and then we let it sit overnight so we're able to work with it again and roll it out to make our croissant cinnamon buns. Before I start actually putting in the filling, is I like to brush it with milk. I'm just gonna take some room temperature butter and brush it all over my pizza dough. I like to put a little bit of egg wash on our top just so that way we can seal it up. It's something that my Nana does. I want mine to taste as much like hers, so that's what I do. Oh, it's beautiful. You're beautiful, baby. I'm just going to set the dough off to the side and get started with my filling. So we're gonna begin by just creaming together our butter and our sugar. Now we're gonna add light brown sugar, we're going to combine brown sugar and some cinnamon. So I'm just gonna whisk these together. We're using maple syrup, delicious bourbon, cinnamon, it's a pinch of salt, and then we just have some corn syrup. And here we have homemade cinnamon bun filling. So now I'm going to put my cinnamon and brown sugar mixture on it. I love Nutella. I love Nutella, so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it on. It feels like I'm painting a picture on a piece of dough, and my paint is my Nutella. What's more fun than that? So now we're gonna take our filling, and we're just gonna spread it all the way through the end. Kind of less is more for this. I'm gonna add a little cinnamon. I think that cinnamon and Nutella go really well together. The next step that we're gonna move on to now is just shaping our, our cinnamon buns. Rolls, buns, rolls. We are gonna fully roll each cinnamon bun individually. Be very gentle. Be very just tender and loving because it's dough, it might fall apart. Honestly, I, I stand by the theory that if it breaks a little, that's fine. You're already using store-bought pizza dough. Who are you kidding? <laughs> we want to cut one inch strips. We just go ahead and start rolling it up. Yes! So here is my loaf. It's funny because it looks like a burrito. It looks like a giant burrito. We're just gonna cut it. So try and keep it even, about an inch apart. Gonna try and do this really gently so I don't squash them. So like each one is about an inch and a half. And this goes into the tin. So we are going to put these rolls into two nine inch round cake pans. I'm gonna start with the ends to get a little practice because they're the worst bits. They can touch, that's no big deal. Let them have a party together. There we have our two pans. Now I'm just gonna brush the tops with butter because everything is better with a little bit more butter. This also kind of makes it nice and brown on top. It gives it that golden color when the dough's coming out. Now we're just gonna go in and sprinkle them with a little bit of sugar. Once you're done rolling all your cinnamon buns up, you're gonna set them somewhere warm so they can begin the proofing process. Let them take a little nap before they go back in the oven. Which is what's gonna make our croissant cinnamon buns light and fluffy. You're gonna see they're actually gonna basically double in size again. You won't recognize them when they're done. So these have proofed for about 45 minutes. Let's take a look. Ooh, they're so pretty. And now we're gonna bake these in the oven at about 375 for 20 to 25 minutes until they're golden brown and delicious. So let's do it. Traditionally, cinnamon buns get glazed with a cream cheese icing, but I of course wanted to step it up and we're gonna use a mascarpone instead. Mascarpone is basically an Italian cream cheese and I really love it for baked goods. So we're just making like an icing kind of thing. I'm just gonna mix this butter, heavy whipping cream in here, kind of feed in some confectioner's sugar. sugar. About a quarter cup of milk. So after I finish mixing this last bit of sugar in, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the vanilla extract and of course some salt. And now I'm gonna just start adding water just a little bit at a time and then we'll just try and get it to sort of a nice glazy herbiness. I really like a frothy and fluffy glaze, so I like to mix it on high to really get a lot of air whipped in. We're not looking to aerate this, we just want everything to come together. Yeah, I think that's probably the kind of texture that I would like. So you can drizzle that. Drizzle, icing, glaze, done, donezo. These are fresh out of the oven. They smell so good. So these have just come out of the oven. They've puffed up just the right amount. You've gotta let these cool down after they come out of the oven. For 15 to 20 minutes so that the icing doesn't melt everywhere. So while these are cooling down just a bit, I'm gonna take some regular sugar and ground cinnamon. Just mix these together. And now we are going to toss each nice warm bun in our cinnamon sugar. So my cinnamon rolls are baked and now I'm gonna put some icing on them. I'm not the best at anything like this, but just pretend that they're pretty. <laughs> just gonna take a spoonful, swirl it around. Go ahead and put on as much as you want. I'm just gonna go a little more nuts with this. I feel like more icing is better. And then we are gonna glaze them with our mascarpone glaze. These are my cinnamon buns. And here are my cinnamon rolls. And here are our croissant cinnamon buns with our mascarpone glaze. All right, our 
cinnamon rolls are ready to eat, and so I'm gonna take a bite. Oh my god. That's so good. That works. Pizza. Duh. The, the dough is buttery and spongy. This is so good. I think I'm gonna have to teach this in my next croissant class. Some people call them cinnamon rolls, while others call them cinnamon buns. Buns, rolls, who knows? But typically, cinnamon rolls are rolled, baked, and topped with a glaze or icing, and cinnamon buns are baked in syrup and turned out from their dish once cooked. Each chef used a different dough as the base of their cinnamon rolls. Emily used store-bought pizza dough, Gabrielle made a homemade enriched yeast dough, and Tracy made a laminated croissant dough. Each of these doughs are distinguishable by their fat content. Emily's store-bought pizza dough is known as a lean dough because it has a very minimal amount of fat. Gabrielle's homemade dough started out like a lean dough, but the addition of butter, milk, and eggs creates an enriched dough. It's going to taste absolutely delicious. Tracy made a laminated dough by layering an enriched dough with thin sheets of butter. Fat acts to tenderize dough by shortening the long gluten strands and preventing them from clumping together. Emily's lean dough has more gluten development, contributing to the roll's crusty exterior and airy interior. Gluten also provides elasticity, which poses a challenge to rolling out the dough. <laughs> the enrichment in Gabrielle's dough provides a soft interior and tender crumb. Tracy's laminated dough will become flaky because the water naturally found in the layers of butter will produce steam and puff each layer individually. Our chefs chose different ways to fill their cinnamon rolls. Emily coated the dough with softened butter and sprinkled over cinnamon and sugar. Gabrielle spread Nutella and cinnamon over her dough, and Tracy made a compound butter with sugar, cinnamon, maple syrup, and bourbon. Delicious bourbon. The sugar in the filling is hygroscopic, or water-loving. It attracts water from the dough, causing the dough to dry out quickly and stale after baking. If you prefer soft rolls and still want to use sugar in the filling, keep the sugar hydrated, like Gabrielle did with her Nutella. I should just start calling it a Nutella roll because that is really what it is. Or like Tracy did with her compound butter. A European butter would be a good way to distinguish that. All of our chefs used a lot of cinnamon in their filling. Cinnamon. 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 Giving the rolls their signature flavor and aroma. Cinnamon's flavor compound, cinnamaldehyde, is fat soluble. So when combined with fat in the filling, like our chefs did with butter, the flavor will be distributed throughout the roll, increasing its potency and producing a pungent cinnamon flavor. All of our chefs used the same techniques to shape the dough. We're going to go ahead and roll this puppy up. They stretched out the dough into a large rectangular shape, spread over the filling, rolled the dough into a log, and sliced them into rolls. After shaping their rolls, Emily baked hers right away, whereas Gabrielle and Tracy allowed theirs to proof before baking. It'll be worth the wait. Proofing is the final fermentation step that allows the shaped dough to rise before baking. During the last proofing step, the yeast in the dough will continue converting sugars into carbon dioxide gas, leavening the bread before baking. The enriched dough that Gabrielle and Tracy use require a longer fermentation time than the lean dough Emily used due to their high fat content and will benefit from the final proofing step. When the cinnamon rolls are subjected to the high heat of the oven, they quickly grow in volume due to the increased rate of fermentation. This process is called oven spraying. Once the rolls have sprung, the crust will begin to form and the rolls will completely form their shape. The cinnamon that our chefs use contains a high content of volatile oils. This means as the cinnamon bakes, the flavor compounds vaporize, become airborne, and fill your kitchen with a delicious aroma. Oh well. <laughs> All of our chefs created an icing to coat the top of their baked rolls. Emily made a thin icing by combining butter, confectioner sugar, vanilla, and hot water. Because I know what I'm doing. Gabrielle also made a thin icing with confectioner sugar, vanilla, and cream. Tracy coated the hot rolls in cinnamon sugar and then whipped a sweet mascarpone icing. It's a little sweeter and a little creamier than our traditional cream cheese. The icings that our chefs made add sweetness and flavor to the rolls, but also help return moisture to the dough after baking. Literally the icing on top. As mentioned, the sugar in the cinnamon swirl is hygroscopic, or water-loving, and will attract water out of the dough and increase the rate of staling. 
All of the icings made by our chefs will reduce the rate of staling by providing an additional source of hydration to the dough. The next time you're in the mood for a sweet treat, roll some of these tips into your next batch of cinnamon rolls.